I found these in the trash. Bloody tissues, and there's blood on your sleeves. What, what's happening? Are you doing something stupid? What? No. Why are you snooping around in my trash? What's wrong with you? Just leave me alone. Okay, this is a good place to stop, a timeout. Mom, let's just have a seat. <laughs> and maybe you can put away the bloody tissue. <laughs> what happened there, Mom? I'm trying to help her, but she won't let me. Something terrible is happening, and she won't tell me. Now, I'm having a really difficult time, and like I'm, I'm not handling it or handling the stress and pressure in a good way by hurting myself. And so it's difficult for me to talk to my mom when she asks me if I'm doing something stupid because it just makes me kind of close off and I'm not, I don't feel comfortable talking to her about these personal and these struggles that I'm going through. Right, this seems to be like a theme with some of the skits that I'm moderating here, whereby when you come upon a teen with a more sort of aggressive stance, it can be very intimidating and it kind of shuts the conversation down. Um, so maybe we can try it a little bit differently this time around, just like last time, and try to take more of a uh, quieter and more inquisitive sort of approach. Okay. Okay, so. And action. This time around, I took a less confrontational approach. And, um, you know, obviously it's very difficult and very painful to have to talk about this kind of a scenario with your child. Um, and I liked how you took a, you know, a very calm and measured sort of discussion of your concerns and how did that feel for you? It was a lot less attacking me and like having her sit down on a really like, level and she had remained like a calm voice and kind of let me know like what she was feeling. I felt a little bit more open and like not as defensive. Right. But it was still a little bit difficult to talk about though. Okay. And how was that for you, Mom? It was not easy, but I feel like whether it's depression or cutting or an eating disorder or drugs or I don't know, that if I just I, I need to know what's happening or I can't do anything, right? And if, I, if she feels like she's being attacked, then we're not going to be on the same side. So I, I know if she's cutting, she must be feeling really bad. She's not doing it to hurt me, she's doing it because she's upset. So I'd rather know about it than not know about it. Okay. All right. Thanks. And, and, and by the way, this one was suggested by an actual teenager who um, said that when her mother said, are you doing something stupid, that there's no way to answer that. You can't say, yes, I'm doing something stupid. <laughs> um, and that when you say what's wrong, that's different than what's wrong with you. So. Okay. This was a difficult um, skit. Uh, I was going to actually take a little moment to invite anybody in the audience to ask any questions they might have. I know one situation and this one just struck 
to me because um, in high school I had an eating disorder and I think a lot of it had to do with the pressures that I felt from academics and athletics and my extracurriculars and um, it's kind of difficult because it's hard when you're struggling it's hard to talk to people and let them know you're struggling you kind of want to put on this front that you know you are succeeding you are doing well especially in our community there's a lot of success in Palo Alto and I think that when people have to resort to certain things to handle that stress um, it can come out in really negative or destructive ways such as this. So I know you had asked if this is something that, that we see as like, like within like, the Department of Psychiatry. Um, it is a common thing and um, a lot of adolescents handle pressure in different ways and handle you know, mental health problems in different ways. So um, there's, this was just one example. But. One more? Um, what is, uh, how common is this uh, type of behavior and uh, do you have any sort of statistics on um, it was one out of ten or five out of ten. What what do you think is the frequency? Wow, that's a tough question. Um, I'll have to look it up and get back to you. Maybe we can talk afterwards. I, I think that the um, NIH is estimating that one in six children or teens has some sort of mental health issue happening. So if you include all of them together, including substances, including depression, and so forth, they're not rare. And there was one more question in the back. Um, I was going to say that the way you said it, I'm your mother, I need to know. And I felt like that should work, but it doesn't work for me. How can I make this? Make him understand that I am your mother. I need to know. And it's not for punishment or just being nosy. It's because I want to help you. And I've tried it different ways, but it just doesn't sit well. Don't give up. I think that's the most important thing. So um, I'm your mother. I need to know. You could um, you'd be like, it's, it's hard to say sometimes I'm your mother and I love you. I'm your, I love you no matter what. I thought about. You know, hugging her is part of the skit, so maybe that would be that would be helpful. I don't know. Would that have been? <laughs> I think <laughs> I think part of it also, as like an adolescent, is knowing that like establishing that relationship with your parent where you feel comfortable talking to them about things. So not only talking about school or you know making sure that you get me to my next my practice or my next extracurricular but kind of doing things together and spending time together beyond just like making me dinner or making sure that I eat and I'm going to bed on time uh, it kind of helps like break down those walls where I feel comfortable to talk to you about other things and one other thing I'll add in is just trying to understand your team there's actually um, you know something about hearing your teen story and trying to understand where they're coming from and just trying to be on their level, as Ami had mentioned, um, that helps a lot in terms of getting them to be able to open up because rarely do people actually get the chance to have someone sit down and try to hear everything they want to say and try to understand them. Um, we call it rapport and like empathy. So um, we're running out of time. We should move on to the next one. Which one's next? Let's do um, the video game. 